My name is Andrew Geller, and I filmed the sculpture of Maria Kretschmann in the Insights into Ancient Egypt Touch Tours at the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Growing up on a farm, your hands are always busy, and the labor, doing something over and over, it enables your creativity, allows your mind to be free, and to think about things, and think about your surroundings, and. Think about what's important to you. My parents always taught us that the most important thing was to find what you loved. I think I found that in making things from nothing. My name is Maria Kretschmann. I am right now on my parents' farm, north of Pittsburgh. Woo! It's like Miami in here. This is the original greenhouse. It's December and we have fresh, fresh Swiss chard. I kind of just fell in love with clay as the material it was sturdy and it was responsive and was a lot like people. I saw these sort of human qualities to clay that I was really drawn to. Over time that evolved into other forms of sculpture. Working with a sense of touch is really a vital way to know. It's, it's not about believing something by seeing it. It's actually about knowing by touching because we employing that sense that we were born with or that we even use prior to being born. It's the mother of all the senses. It is the sense that teaches us just so much of texture, temperature, pressure. We decided that besides giving people Braille handouts about the, a little bit of the background of ancient Egyptian culture. We wanted to give them a hands-on of uh, various elements. You know, exciting for the docents as well because, you know, we are, we're used to telling people, don't touch, don't touch. We just use the uh, hand wipes. People get to experience, uh, you know, touching the object and they can feel the inscriptions, the hieroglyphs. In order to complete the full story for people who are using touch as a medium of learning, and seeing, we asked our artist who worked with us last year as well to create replica for us as a whole. So it's really scale models of the original artifacts. Now, just to tell you so that you don't freak out, it's actually not a real mummy. It's a sculpture and we actually have our sculptor here today who's a Philadelphia artist who has created this piece for us. I wanted to show some of the process of mummification through the piece. So there's three sections. Obviously the sarcophagus, which is the vessel that holds the form. wrapped part and then there's sort of the exposed, decomposed flesh, which is the top part. I did a simple tape form where I wrapped a friend of mine in packing tape and cut it off of her and then sort of packed in peanuts and foam to, to retain the form. Dress the outside with the, I did about, I think there's probably 10 layers of linen. This top part is resin and yeah. beeswax and some cheesecloth. It's one thing to feel them yourself and you know to be able to just touch this stone that's like 4,000 years old in some cases is just amazing to be able to touch these authentic artifacts. You can almost feel you know feel the energy, you can feel the time and the uh, human effort put into it and all of those things. In the gallery we have a very tall nine-foot statue of Ramses the Great. 
Again, he's so tall that a replica was made, so Murray created this beautiful replica so you can really understand his seated position and what his head was like and his shoulders. So what is this made of? Which this one? is curved foam. This is really? stone? Oh. Mm -hmm. to be a part of doing the touch tours because it wasn't just for me. It's as though the work had some greater purpose in the world. And as a maker, it's exciting to watch a person interact with a piece of art. Our touch tour. All the students had like a mini art session that afternoon. We had an all-day event there which was really awesome. Each student kind of did a little mini maquette, like a tiny piece that they have come and they're here upscaling them into larger pieces. Like Ron's working on his over here. When you're first learning to have that tiny replica, it helps you understand the massiveness. That is such a huge tool because they can feel it, they can, they can experience it. Those things got them to, to some of the places yeah. they are here in our class. That's a lion in the nose. That's right. Okay. Okay. And she's wearing a headdress. Okay, I can use the head. She has a feline head and human body. Yeah. Huh? What, Carla? Feline head and human body. Okay. I made in plasticine. And then I just laid, uh, you know, did your traditional glue and uh, used paper. She made a, a fabulous mask that goes along with our tall and rather wonderful Sekhmet statues, a female goddess with a lioness mane and head and a female body form. With touch, you can learn, you can learn a lot and people have noticed things that sometimes we haven't noticed. We found a few things on some of the statues that the docents using their vision had not found. And that was a thrilling thing to do. It was really terrific to see, ah, oh, look at this, they've, they've went to that level of detail. All these different amazing features, all the amazing detail, you know, and the, even things like the feet and the hands and the fingernails and uh, Sekhmet's whiskers and just, all the exquisite detail that you'd really only pick up by touch to be able to then guide other people to those exact points and really show them uh, is really cool. It's been wonderful to be that connected to people and that connected to the information and, and just be the nexus point to, to bring one to the other. Okay, you feel it? Okay, yes, yeah, so I do it. It's, it's, it's enclosed. Yes, yes. it's yeah. called a cartouche. A cartouche. Yes. Getting to come and touch these things, you really kind of bond with them in a way. You become very intimate with the objects. You know, you remember who made these statues, human beings, human beings with their hands. So to touch something that's been created by another person, no matter that it might be 5,000 years ago, is very enriching. You know, my own work has to do with tactility and I think that that's important. And everything that I make tried to break down that wall between the artist and the viewer. Touch is a part of our daily lives, and I believe it should be fundamental in the experience of art.